Welcome to another exciting show of Community Center. I'm Robert Quaya, and today we're going to learn firsthand the ins and outs of how to buy a home. This first home we're going to tour is a beautiful home located in the Sunset Falls community. This one has 2,800 square feet, five bedrooms, three baths, with a two-car garage, and it's sitting on perhaps one of the most beautiful lake views you will ever see. So this home is located in Sunset Falls and one of West Broward's best communities. Uh, 2,700 square feet, four bedroom, three bath, two stories as you can see. And this one will blow you away when you see the view. Unbelievable. Let's come check it out. As you can see, it's got a beautiful lake. The owners are planning on moving down south, so they've already started selling stuff. But I will open this up into a French doors, because as you'll see later, we can incorporate a beautiful ground up here. So you've got your setup here with a great room, where you've got your living and dining room. My goodness, 42 inch cabinets, all wood, stainless steel appliances, microwave, double oven, and um, nice features with the crown, lots of lighting in here, and of course granite tops, which everyone loves. So as you can see here in the family room, you've got plenty of space to put even a larger TV screen. Although it's a two-story home, it does have 9.6 foot ceilings, which gives it a nice space. And it's all wired and set up for your um, surround sound. And again, the kitchen, which is truly spectacular upstairs and show you the bedrooms up there so you can see what we have up there and then we'll go outside. See the bedrooms are quite spacious and notice the lower windows. This is part of why you have a lot of light in here. Notice how the windows are lower so that gives you a much better feel inside the room. You've got walk-in closets all finished with cabinetry. This room connects to the bathroom here, which is kind of nice because it gives you a Jack and Jill. You've got a connection right over here to that room. And then right behind you over here, business out of their home here, like many folks do today. And again, the lower windows give you a lot of more space. Another bedroom. Notice all the bedrooms have ceiling fans as well. And when you look at the closets, they're all finished with the cabinetry, maximizing the space. And now the best room of the home, which of course is the master bedroom. Spacious, covered ceiling. You have uh, nice low windows, and then of course the view of this lake, which again is magnificent. On the master bathroom, you've got a combination of the tub and the shower, and that is something that many folks look for in a home today. You've got, of course, a double sink. Notice how they're high, very spacious, very comfortable master bath. And another great feature here, of course, is you have the his and hers walk-in closets, which um, everyone wants, and full-length mirrors, which again, gives you a lot of flexibility in the home. These homeowners are gonna also leave pretty much everything that you see, all the light fixtures, all the ceiling fans, including this beautiful chandelier, which again, is right there looking at the uh, beautiful lake view. So all of these things are gonna be included in this home as well downstairs which is something that people really look for is you've got a full bedroom downstairs with a bath and uh, for those folks that have perhaps a, um, in laws living with them an elderly person it's always so much more convenient to be able to have a bedroom downstairs and one of the features again that people really like about these homes is you notice here they have eight foot doors and that's something that gives it more space, it gives it 
a better feel overall of the house. Much more of an elegant look. And again here, lots of closet space. That's one thing this home has, and that's a lot of closet space. I'd like to take you to the best part of the home. This is a mile long lake it's a little windy today, which is great because it'll give us a good perspective on the waves. I can't tell you how magnificent it looks when you're out here and even seeing the storms coming up. Another thing is that the home does, the back of the home faces east, so you'll have the sun in the morning over on this side, and then in the afternoon, you have the sun from the front. A lot of folks like that too, and they enjoy that. and the right realtor, you'll find the right home. It just takes teamwork and we'll make it work. South Florida, like most places in the country, has gone through a tremendous change in regards to the real estate market, uh, more than anything regarding values. Here in South Florida, we've seen drops of value from pretty much the end of 2005, beginning of 2006. Uh, from that era to today, you've probably seen values drop a total of 35 to as much as 55, 60%. And that sounds like a lot, but it's true, especially in the condo market. When you look at nice communities, gated communities, residential areas out in the suburbs with good school districts, it's an average of 35, maybe 40% drop. And they've been stable now for the last 18 months. Prices have been pretty stable. But um, it'll probably stay that way for a while, and then hopefully, if things get better, uh, when they get better, then we'll start seeing an increase in values steadily, healthy, slowly, not the madness we had when the market was going crazy back in 03, 04, 05. Conventional financing has gotten a little challenging, so you pretty much, if you don't have 10%, 20% down, it's hard to go that way. That's why FHA, and they had lowered the limits a while back, but now they've increased them recently again, and we're back up to 423,000 in the South Florida area. So if you think about it, with prices dropping, and many homes you can find today, really nice, decent homes in the twos and threes, uh, you can go all the way up to 423,000 and find a home and finance it through the FHA. And FHA is only 3.5% down. And that's, uh, in many cases, you can have the uh, homeowner pay a part of, if not all, the closing costs. So again, if you have small funds available, that's the best way out. And FHA guidelines are a little bit more lenient in regards to uh, what they require, uh, banks require in regards to the uh, ratios of debt, income, and all that good stuff. But yeah, FHA is definitely the way to go today. In many cases when people are wanting to be in the market and buy a home, they have a situation where their credit is okay, they can qualify credit-wise, but they don't have the funding. So lease option, lease purchase are possibilities. When we're in a flat market as we are right now, it might be viable to go that route. When the market is appreciating a little bit, some homeowners don't want to do that because they're banking in the future and they don't know what the price is going to be. If it's a little higher, they don't want to set a price up today. Lease option is certainly a way to go. It's um, not a very complicated process, but it does. between a lease option and a lease purchase is basically, if you think of lease option, is basically an option. And you go into the transaction with the homeowner where you're going to rent the home from them and you both understand that there might be, uh, you both have the option to go ahead and down the road, and that's established in the beginning. It could be six months from now, it could be 12 months from now. You both will go ahead and entertain 
the idea of going into contract to get the home purchased and sold. The difference between that and a lease purchase many times is where you, with the lease purchase, you set everything up front now. You establish how much it's going to be the rent and what the purchase price will be. And usually those are done with a lesser, t lesser time period. Instead of 12 months, many times on a lease purchase, it could be 12 months or more, but for the most time, for the most part, those are done in uh, shorter periods of time. And again, it's because some the buyer may not have the funds out, but they know they're going to have them in a few months. Well, you know, a lot of folks today are forced to lease because, again, as we spoke earlier, the guidelines for financing are quite tight. You know, the banks are being very strict in how they qualify buyers. So many folks, because of recent short sales that they may have had, um, issues with the economy that forced them to have some issues with their credit, uh, they'd like to buy. Many of them have the funds to buy, but they just don't qualify for the loan. And again, that's why lease option, lease purchase could be a possibility for some of these folks. Well, today, really, many folks will tell you, many people, any expert, many experts will tell you that today, it's really the best time to buy. As I mentioned earlier, prices have dropped pretty much to where they were going to drop. In fact, we've seen in the good, stable areas of South Florida that prices have been the same. In other words, what they're selling today is pretty much the same what they've been selling a year, year and a half ago. So that indicates to you that there's no where else to go but up. Now, it's not going to be like it was before. We're probably going to stay flat for a few more years. Who knows? I don't have the crystal ball, and I <laughs> wish I did. But you've got three to five more years probably of a flat market, and then things will start to increase. So yes, today is really the best time to buy. It's a great question. Today you have primarily three types of sellers that you're going to run into as a home buyer. First, you've got the regular folks that are selling their home, okay, for whatever reason, downsizing, upsizing, they're being relocated, transferred. Uh, then, of course, you have the short sales, and then you've got also the what's known as the REOs, also known as foreclosed properties. Now, REOs, foreclosed properties, are simply bank-owned. The bank finally took possession of the home. In many cases, they're going to probably, once they have possession, send out two evaluations of the property, meaning two appraisals. They're going to set a price. Based on that, usually it's a very attractive price because their goal is to just get it sold, get done with it, and move on, get dispose of that asset as quickly as possible. Those are great, but they don't stay on the market long, so you don't see that inventory accumulating much. Uh, short sales, it's a whole different story. Short sales, you can probably get a good deal. That's probably the best way to get a good deal. However, you have to have time on your side. So, for example, if you came to me and said, you know, I want to move into my home within the next 30 to 45 days, we can't do a short sale because a short sale is going to take longer. And basically that means that the what a short sale is is that the homeowner owes more than the property is worth. And they now are approaching the bank and saying, look, I have a hardship, financial hardship, whatever situation there may be, and they ask the bank to allow them to sell the home for what as much as the home will bear in the market, and then at that point the bank will take the loss. That whole process takes a while. There's a lot more we can talk about short sales, and it's important to understand that process because that is one of your options and perhaps the best way to get a good deal. Now, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to take you on another South Florida property tour. Yeah, there was. Come back. Now we're going to show you this house that we said before that's being renovated. This is in a gated community. It's a great four bedroom, two and a half bath. And we're going to show it to you now while it's being done. And then we're going to show you the finished product. You're going to like this and it's a really good deal. Uh, I'm going to put new carpeting in. It's got new tiles, new kitchen cabinets, new appliances. The bathrooms are being redone. Uh, but when we come back and see it,
Um, and right now, it looks like a little war zone. And again, you've got probably around 1,900 square feet. So it's 1,900 square feet, four bedrooms, two and a half bath. And the yard is pretty good size, too. So This is, this is what they call a zero lot line. You've heard of that? So you've got the property line on this side, ends right there with the shared wall. And then on this side, it goes all the way out to the wall of the other side. This is all belongs to the other property right here. It goes all the way back here. It's gonna sell right away. As soon as I, as soon as we hit this on the market, yeah. it's gonna go right away. Cause I, I've sold here, you know, for 250, 260, you know, three bedrooms. At least. Welcome back to Community Central. It's been two weeks since we've seen this home. Now we want to show you our finished product. I'm ready with my camera. We're ready to get this thing on the market. Let me show you what we've done. In our half bath or the powder room, I want, to see, I want you to see what we did. Nice decorative mirror, brand new cabinets, granite top, new faucets. And all of a sudden you got yourself a brand new bed. You can see we went in and put brand new granite, faucet, sinks, beautiful cabinetry, and the seamless glass enclosure on the shower with, with tile, which everyone loves today. Remember, this one is a four bedroom, two and a half bath. You've already seen the half bath and the master bath. Check out what we did with this bath. Put new cabinets in, granite, faucet, sink, and again, exactly what folks are looking for today. Now, this bedroom is one of the three secondary bedrooms. And again, that's what makes this home so special. At 247.5 in the city of Pembroke Pines, four bedrooms, two and a half bath, and the conditions that this home is on, we're definitely gonna attract buyers, and there's a lot of people out there waiting for homes like this.
Well, among the many features this home has, it's already pre-wired for internet, high-speed internet, cable, everything that you need technologically wise, which of course is something that people are looking for today. Now this is one of the three secondary bedrooms of this home, and as you can see, it's a great size. It's over, I think, I think this one is 10 by 12. Now, in Pembroke Pines, four bedrooms, two and a half baths at 247.5, and the conditions that this home is in, with all of the options and features, there's no question this is what buyers are looking for today. point because inventory levels have dropped quite a bit so that makes it a little better for homeowners that are trying to sell meaning they can try and capitalize a little bit on the price uh, but I believe the uh, overall mindset of people is that they really are in a buyer's market therefore uh, at the end of the day the market is going to uh, stay more of a buyer's market for now although we do expect a lot of foreclosure inventory to come in uh, over the next few months. And that is probably something that the banks have been holding back, but they are definitely going to start releasing more and more inventory. Right now, the market is absorbing everything that's being put out there. People are buying. People are looking. Um, financing is difficult. The banks are really strict on financing today. but. Here in South Florida, FHA raised their limits again to 423, and that's helped a lot because now folks can buy a home uh, with the FHA benefits um, and buy up to 423,000. Most of the FHA transactions we see are in the twos and maybe the threes. The difference between a lease option and a lease purchase is basically, if you think of lease option, is basically an option. And you go into the transaction with the homeowner where you're going to rent the home from them. And you both understand that there might be, uh, you both have the option to go ahead and down the road. And that's established in the beginning. It could be six months from now. It could be 12 months from now. You both will go ahead and entertain the idea of going into contract to get the home purchased and sold. The difference between that and a lease purchase many times is where you with the lease purchase, you set everything up front now. You establish how much it's going to be the rent and what the purchase price will be. And usually those are done with a lesser, ter l lesser time period. Instead of 12 months, many times on a lease purchase, it could be 12 months or more, but for the most time, for the most part, those are done in uh, shorter periods of time. And again, it's because some the buyer may not have the funds out, but they know they're going to have them in a few months. Absolutely, uh, that would be great. They can reach me by email, which is on the screen right now, or you can call my office at 954-358-6010. And it'll be my pleasure to discuss anyone's needs in regards to real estate.